Hello, everyone. Hi, Valisa. Perfect. I know we're going to have some other people jumping in, but we are going to get started. Welcome to the Get Fit With Me Expanding Your Physical and Mental Fitness Group. Remember, this group is for individuals who are ready to expand their physical and mental fitness while supporting others with similar goals along the way. So I have a question, whether you are watching the replay or you are with us live, I want to know on a scale to one to 10, you can hold up your fingers, you can do whatever. How are you feeling right now? Are you feeling sluggish and tired? One being no energy, or are you at 10? Like I am excited. It is Thursday. It's almost the weekend. Where are you falling right now? Okay. We got some sevens. I like that somewhere in the middle. So I want to know now when you waste your time and your money on something on a scale to one to 10, how do you feel? One being, I am pissed off that I did that, or 10, like, ah, or 10 be like, oh, I'm so happy I wasted all that money. I want to do it again. A one, yes. When, why would we ever want to spend time wasting our money and spend time just wasting our valuable time that we have in our day? So I want to know, have you spent money on something or invested your money on something and did not use it or did you or did not use it to its full potential was it worth the money that you spent or invested think about that was it that item from target that you bought that you said you were going to use time after time and it's still in the box in the basement is it the gym membership that you bought that you never went to because you were uncomfortable is it the fitness class that you kept going back to because people drug you to it, but not because you enjoyed it? What think is there's got to be something in our life that we have invested our money and time into that has not worked out. So I want to know, let's introduce ourselves. Belisa, introduce yourself and let us know what comes to mind and what you've invested your money on that was not worth it. Hi. I'm Belisa. I have, um, yeah, it's kind of makes me feel a little bad when I think of some of the stuff I've invested in, like different random exercise equipment, not like full home gym stuff, but just those little things on like infomercials that you would see. And they're like now in, at Target, I'm like, oh, I'm going to try that. It never <laughs> worked. Weird um, half like crescent moon type board and you're supposed to shake on it. Yep. Can't figure that out. Um, I probably bought a few vitamin diet type drugs that makes you think, Oh, I just take this and I can still keep eating all the food I want. And those don't work. So I don't even know why I did that. Um, so yeah, I, I've tried my fair share of those fad get, you know, fit things that don't work outside of that fad kind of stuff is there anything outside of fitness and health that you've invested in that you wish you wouldn't have um or do you find it's mostly that your waste of money has been put into things for your health right no there still can be like clothes or food <laughs> or decoration stuff that like looked good at the store and then I got it home and I went why did I buy that I'm not gonna cook it or it looked <laughs> me yeah those curtain looks great but they really don't go with my room so yeah I've had a fair share of regret purchases and today you're feeling a seven why are you feeling a seven I'm feeling a seven because I worked out this morning I did the resistant band class from yesterday. And at first I was thinking like, oh, you know, this seems super easy. And then after circuit one, I was like, wow, my arms are really feeling this. So that was a great workout. So that made me feel good that I did that this morning. Um, I had a salad for lunch. I'm on track for my water intake. So when I do those things and I'm sitting at my work desk, 
being productive. So some of those things all make me feel, feel good. Sounds like you're killing it today. You know, I'm trying. <laughs> you got, you got your water, you got your food, you got your workout. I know you have something else coming later today and yep. you're being productive. You're checking all the boxes. Yes. I am happy to hear you are at a seven. I am probably at like an eight or a nine, but I always am on these calls because I love being here and I love being on these calls with you guys and sharing what I know with you guys. So we're going to talk about how you can stop wasting your time and wasting your money. And I'm going to be honest, I fall, I have fallen into that time after time. I can admit I have wasted my time and my money on items, events, subscriptions, memberships, anything and all you could probably think of. I've wasted my money and time on it at some point. And I couldn't figure out why I kept rebuying it or I kept redoing I'm like, oh, if I just spend the money, I'll do it. Or if I just do this, it will be better. It'll be better this time. It will be better. When that wasn't the case, the case was. I wasn't using it and I couldn't, and I just, I couldn't figure out why until I did. So the three things that I found was that the price that I was spending for my membership to either a gym or to classes or on anything that I was going to do to better myself, the investment was too low. It was only a $5. For $5, we can grab something off the shelf. We can do $5 is a little amount. So right away I thought, oh, it's $5. It's at least my account each month, I won't notice it. The investment was too low that I just let it slip by me without, without realizing it. Second is I joined a gym and it was not functional for me. I did not try it out. It did not work. It did not have what I wanted. And I ended up liking doing what I was doing at home or at a different gym better. I wasn't able to move forward because of the fear or the uncomfortability or the functionality of what I had purchased. And the last thing is I've been dragged to a few group fitness classes and, or I've met with people and the styles and the personalities of the instructors just did not mesh with mine. And that was okay. But in the long term, I should have stopped because I was wasting their time. I was wasting my money and I was wasting my time because I wasn't asking the right questions beforehand or being okay with stepping away. A lot of times we get into these things and we have that fear of what's your cancellation policy or uh, I'm going to pull out and I'm not going to pay for this anymore. or I'm going to stop showing up. And that's okay, but we're going to learn how to get ahead of that so that you don't have those fears when the time comes. I learned to figure out what I wanted. And now I know, I know what works for me. I know what I need in my gym. If I'm going to have a gym, I know what kind of equipment I find functional that, and I know that works. I know what kind of personalities I mesh well with. It's taken time to figure out those things. And part of this today is figuring out that for you. You need to figure out what kind of holds you up. Why do you always jump into it? Is it because it's only that $5 thing that you say, oh, it's only $5 had this conversation that $5 at Target adds up very quickly or that $20 on Amazon four, four times a month really adds up when you're like, crap, was it 80 bucks 12 times a year? That's a lot. That's a lot of money that we don't realize we're just wasting away. So before I share with you what I have found, I want to know what kinds of things do you do before? Oh, hold on. We got one more person coming in. Hello, Jean. Your audio is connecting. So I want to know, what do you guys do before you purchase something? Is there a process that you go through? Um, we're going to go around. I want to know kind of what your thought process is, what you do before you purchase anything. Um, Lisa, let's start with you. What do you do before you purchase anything? No matter the price. Well, I I think it can go one of two ways. Like sometimes I purchase it just because I know I need to have it. So there's maybe a slight thought process to it, um, but uh, the smaller amounts, um, I don't think about it as much as the larger purchases of, is this in my budget? But for small items, 
I don't. I feel like I got a buffer for the smaller items. Um, but yeah, I think more like, is this going to break the bank or does it fit in the budget? Um, and then maybe as the older I get, I think a little bit more of like, is this a good investment or is this just <laughs> wasted money? Because I guess having kids, you know, I don't, I don't just spend it as easily as I probably did years ago. So it sounds like one of the things that you look at the most is the price of something mm -hmm. to determine if you're wasting your money or not. Yes. Okay. Keep that in mind as we go through. Jean, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell you how, tell us how you're feeling on a scale to one to 10, 10 being excited and super happy to be here. Your day is going awesome. One being I'm exhausted. This is like pulling teeth. Let us know how you're feeling and have you wasted your money on something? <laughs> um, I would say that I am probably uh, eight or nine, maybe I'm doing pretty good. It's been a pretty relaxed day, semi-productive, probably have been a little more productive. Um, and have I wasted my money on something? Yeah. What have you wasted your money on? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Oh, wow. Um, I would say some people might say horses, uh, <laughs> but I enjoy that. So I would say not, um, gosh, I think you waste your money on a lot of stuff that, I mean, sometimes it's buying stuff for your kids. Um, like when they were little, just to shush them, you know? <laughs> Um, I've wasted money on, I think stuff I don't need or like food items, clothing, that kind of stuff. Um, some of the stuff I see in my closet that's still sitting there, I was, wore it once or twice and then not. And currently before you purchase something, do you have like a process that you run through, through your head? Do you, what is the first thing you think about before you purchase something? I would say either, do I really need it or cost? Okay. Those are the common reasons that people join in certain things. It's because they look at, they look at the cost first and they look at everything else that's included second. And sometimes that works out and sometimes it doesn't. And I'm part of the it doesn't if you don't do your research. So I'm gonna share three big things and under those three things are a bunch of little tips and tricks. So really you're gonna get more than five today. If you wanna take notes, you are more than welcome to pull out a sheet of paper. Feel free to, and if not, you can go back and watch the replay. I'll make sure to tag you guys in the replay if you are live here so that you can go back and rewatch these. So number one, do the research, read the reviews, and spend the time. Number two, ask questions. Ask the right questions. And number three, stay aware. So let's go into the do the research, read the reviews, and spend the time. I am notorious for buying off Amazon. I will buy, and I used to be the person that would buy, I type in, oh, this is what I need. Top thing, great, purchase it. Don't even look at how many stars it had. If it's on Amazon Prime, it could be here in two days. That's all I cared about. I cared about if it was cheap and if it could get to me as soon as I could. Well, then I ended up having to struggle with the return. They make returns easy, but I still have to leave the damn house, go to USPS, have them scan my phone, put the label on, that in the long run, if I would have spent five extra minutes up front looking at my reviews, doing some research on it, I would have spent the time up front, which would save me half hour to an hour in the long run. 10 minutes in the start saves you so much in the end. So when it thinks, when you start thinking about those purchases of items that you have, think about have you bought something that didn't work how you wanted it to? Like crap, I, I didn't read it fully. It was, I needed black and I got a brown one. Like 
something that if we would have just slowed down and spent some extra time on would have helped us in the long run. Something else is when you are looking into a gym, read the reviews, ask others around you like, hey, have you been to this gym? See what people say. People will tell you if they like it or not. There will be people there that enjoy it. There will be people there that hate it. And there'll be people there that hate it and are still members because of the price. They're like, I absolutely hate it. I barely use it, but it's the cheapest one out there. So I'm going to still, I would not sign up for something. If that is what somebody told me, I'm, I don't care if it's the cheapest one out there. I still would not buy it. I would still not buy into it. Taking time on the front end to spend the time is going to save you loads of time in the end. Have you guys done something where you've ended up doing a lot more at work on the back end because you didn't want to spend the time up front? Probably, but I can't remember. It's, we do it all the time. I do it when I go to Meijer. I, if I, trying on clothes at a store is an example. How often do you guys buy something at the store, say, I'm going to try it on at home, and then the return sits in your car for six months? <sighs> and it's a waste of your time. But if you. Money, because if it tries on, it doesn't work, you're not going to get it. So then you end up saving your money. Number two, ask the questions and ask the right questions. I'm going to rattle off some things that I share with people before you join a gym, before you hire a coach or a trainer, before you commit to group fitness classes. If you are part, looking to be part of a gym, before you sign any sort of contract, even if it's a penny, if it's $100, whatever that contract is, ask for a sample week or a trial. A lot of gyms, if you say, hey, can I try out your gym for a day, a week? They will either give you a pass at a discounted rate or they'll say, yes, here is a little pass. Come try the gym for a week. By doing that, you are going to be able to go in, see if it has what you want functionality wise. If you love walking on the treadmill and you get there and their treadmill absolutely sucks, you know, that's a game changer. That is a big thing that you need to know before you sign up. Taking time to ask, can I have a trial week? Can I have a trial day? Something like that, even if it is a small cost, will save you loads of money in the long run rather than having to pay to get out of a contract. Will save you time to having to go back in and have an uncomfortable conversation of, yeah, I really don't like your gym. Can I, can I get out of this? Another thing is, if you have people in the family that you know will only come sometimes, ask if, you, if they have a guest rate. A lot of times people just sign on their other family members knowing that they're going to come once a month because they think it's cheaper. Most gyms allow a guest rate up to like three to five times a month. Great. You pay five or $10 each time that person comes in and they, you can bring a guest rather than adding them on to your membership at a higher cost. When it comes to the trial session, think about that as a trainer. So if you are getting ready to hire a personal trainer, there's a, there's a big relationship that falls there. You need to make sure that your guys' personalities mix, that your styles mix, that you guys have the same kind of vision for goals, that what they specialize in and how they work with their clients is a way that you want to be worked with. Ask and say, hey, can we do a trial session before I decide if I want to fully commit? I am all for that. When I do any sort of training for personal training, we sit down, I give you a free 30 minute session to try it out. At the end, if you like our styles, that's going to be the game changer. You're either going to like it or you're going to, you're not, but then, you know, rather than the, hmm, I don't know, I'm going to wait around and try to figure it out. Ask about the cancellation policy up front. How do you go about it? Is it, you have to do it in person, which is always harder to cancel something when you have to go in person. Is it, you can only cancel after X amount of months? What is the process at which you have to do it? Ask those questions. Another thing that I like to ask is, or that I get asked is for my live Zoom classes, does your class pass expire? So as Lisa knows, because she's purchased the class pass, the class pass is 10 classes for $75 rather than a drop-in class for 10. 
awesome. You get a great deal. You get a 25% discount. But I get the question, do I have to use those in X amount of time? No, you do not have to use those in X amount of time. I originally had, you had three months, but life happens. People go on vacation and things change. So I've taken the ex expiration date off. Knowing that you've purchased that, I expect to see you until you use that up. That is a little, mm -mm, nope, you still have this many classes left. You better be showing up. And knowing that the people you work with or the people you are buying from, you have a trust in, that is what is important. Number three, stay aware. Do any of you guys pay for a subscription currently? I do. No. Do you have Netflix? Oh, Amazon Prime. So... Think of all those things that we probably throw in and we signed up for that monthly subscription for and did not realize. We're like, oh, I use this all the time. Whereas Amazon Prime, totally worth the subscription for. Totally worth it. Other things, Disney Plus, I don't use very much. Probably should not have that subscription anymore. Figure out and be aware of the subscriptions that you have. If you take a look and you sit down for just one month, either your credit card or your debit card, whichever one that you put your subscriptions on, kind of make a list. Do you have Netflix? Do you have Hulu? Do you have a gym membership that gets withdrawn? Do you have, I buy my coffee off Amazon every five weeks it's delivered. That's my subscription. Like I, I try to stay, you have to stay aware of those because eventually the price for those things will go up and you will miss the email that the price for those have gone up. And you will add it up and realize you are spending more money than what you are using it for. Are you, and if you're not using it, cancel it. At the end of this call, go cancel it. I know people that pay for apps on their phone, for subscriptions, for premium, and they've never used them. Cancel it. It's not worth it. Or the one that always gets to you is when they say it's a free trial. You put in your credit card, but you have to cancel before that free trial is up or you're charged. And then you forget about it. And then you all of a sudden have this reoccurring payment. And you're like, wait, I don't use that. I thought I canceled that. And then it's this whole ordeal in the end. So if you are doing free trials, make sure that you put a huge reminder in your phone three days prior to it canceling so that you or to being charged so that you can cancel it. Make sure that you are looking over anything that is just naturally coming out of your bank account. When it is coming out without you realizing it, that's where you're spending your money without notice, without care, without acknowledgement to it. How is all this sitting with you guys? Do you feel like you're kind of falling it? Are there more things popping up in your mind as we talk? How's everyone feeling? Lisa? Definitely kind of made me pause and think of some things of different subscriptions or just kind of money that I don't think about you know and can kind of spend and then after the fact of like why did I do that I really didn't need that or what value did that just give me um so it's a little eye-opening to really think or I like the the Amazon example where you just found like the first one, I got caught in that. And so now I'm more mindful of looking at the reviews and making sure it's exactly what I want because when you click too fast and you get it and realize it isn't the hassle afterwards is, is a pain. So that's like a good life lesson just in general. What would you say if you, if you were to look at your subscriptions and realize that each month you were spending an extra $25 that you did not, that you did not know you were spending. So hold on. Cause I'm not good at math. We need this for a second. Um, doo -doo -doo. that's not right. That is, that is $300 a year. If you realize you were mindlessly spending $300 a year without knowing it, what would you invest your money in? Ooh, that's interesting. 
well, I feel like now that we got a dog, this dog is taking a <laughs> things <laughs> or she chews a lot of things and needs stuff. But um, I guess my kids are getting older. So it'd be nice to like invest in some kind of activity or something that keeps them um, entertained or, you know, enhances you know, their well-being in some way. Um, but yeah, something with more value than just wasted dollars. I'm going to challenge you to take a look and see if you have any of those things or find patterns in any of your stuff that you're like, oh, I realize I spend money on coffee this many days a week. And really, I don't drink all of it. I only drink a few sips and then I don't want it. Like find some stuff that you Think about things that you're wasting your money on and just tally it up and see how much it would be to eliminate those or to just be more mindful of those. Got it. Jean, how about you? How are you feeling about all this? Pretty good, because actually I had, um when you said to put it in your calendar, you know, so you can uh, um, cancel your subscription before that it gets charged. I um, signed up for just a month pass of the NHFS network, which you can live stream sports and stuff. And that's what I did because I had to give my credit card for the month that I bought. And if you don't cancel, they'll keep charging you. So I put in my calendar to cancel it. So that's, that's going to get canceled. And then um, I think, I think I've gotten pretty good because I've, well, I've been at this a little longer and been screwed a little longer on <laughs> letting things slip like that. You know what I mean? And so um, there was, and there's like some, the last thing is I've, there were some horse supplements that I was using on a horse and I really didn't see a difference in what I wanted to. So I, he was on him for like three months. And so I went ahead and canceled that because it was, a, a, you know, an automatic renewal and I'll probably try it again next winter um, to see if, if, and I'll probably start it a little bit sooner just to see if there's any bigger difference, but he, his issue doesn't always happen in the summer, but it happens in the winter. So I went ahead and canceled that, but yeah, it's super easy to get caught up in the auto pay and I'm, I like it, but I don't like it. Do you, so for this horse supplement, what are the reviews on it? Have you found others have found it helpful or is yeah. it kind of half and half? No, I mean, it's a good, it's a good supplement and I'm not going to say what it is or anything. Um, but, uh, and I was directed to try it from, uh, Jamie Crawford, who I totally trust and, Perfect. and it worked for her horse. It just didn't work for my horse. So. And sometimes that happens. And that's also the hard part where you get a great referral from somebody you trust. And it doesn't work for you or it wasn't what you were hoping for. Right. And yeah. Sometimes it's, I bit the bullet. You cancel the subscription like you did and I'll try it again at a different time. Yeah. And maybe he wasn't ready for it. Just like maybe we're not ready for a lot of the other things that we sign up for. You have to be mentally ready to make a change and step forward. So having an investment behind it really makes you follow through with it. Um. So with that being the case, I want to know what was your biggest like takeaway from today's thing? What is the one thing that you're going to, that's going to stick to you like glue that you're going to remember and kind of incorporate before you buy something? For me, I think just planning, more planning, more investigating, thinking about something, not impulse. Um, but I still sometimes impulse and it's like, eh, I'm going to grab that. It's, it's not a big deal kind of thing, but thinking and planning. Let's see. I just real fast wanted to say, hi, Jean. It's nice to see you again. 
been a while on our calls. Um, I know it's been, but, I've missed you. Yes. Um, I would say my kind of takeaway to, um, is some of those points and finding the value in what I'm purchasing. So like, yeah, if I go to the grocery store, a lot of the food we're getting is stuff that I know we're going to eat. I have meals in you know, mind for it. Or if I'm buying clothes, not just randomly getting, you know, pants and shirts or something for the kids, but knowing like, these are the things that everyone needs. So just being more intentional of the purchases I'm making are for a reason. And then value. So not just those things, but what am I doing for myself, right? Am I going to buy, um, you know, a pass and then actually not do any of the workouts because that's just a waste of money, you know, but spending money on things that I enjoy and look forward to doing. So that brings value to it and makes sense. I love that you said at the grocery store, because that is a huge place where we will spend money on food. If you don't have a list or you don't have an intent, you, you're not intentional when you're going around the store. What do you do to help keep, to stay intentional when you go to the store? Yeah, I usually try and have a list, um, but our living in the country, our you know grocery store isn't right around the corner. So um, I'm not gonna go to it, you know, every couple of days or even once a week, usually it's kind of like every two weeks. So I will have to go down every aisle because I wanna see what's on sale. And I know certain stuff like, oh, I can stack up on this. I'm maybe not gonna use it, you know? It might take me a month or so, like canned goods or whatever. But if it's on sale, it's a value that I know I will eventually use. Um, so being mindful, but yeah, if I go in without a list sometimes or just on a whim, it can get carried away real fast. I agree with that. And I know we've talked about this. So I'm going to share that when, if you are someone that goes to the grocery store once a week and you know you're not having to buy everything you're only going to eat every two weeks, but shopping around the perimeter first of your grocery store. So starting with your produce, your fruits, start in that front area right there. Our grocery store is set up. You have your fruits, then you have your meat. Then you have your cheeses and you have all your dairy along the outside. And once you know you have all of those, then only go down the aisles of food that you know. Like if you don't have chips on your list, don't go down the chip aisle because you'll see the five bags for $12 and all of a sudden you have five bags of chips in your bag. And one, you don't usually need them. And two, you just wasted your money on chips. So if you want chips and you know uh, tortilla chips are about the only chip that we will buy on like a routine because we eat a lot of tacos, burritos. We eat a lot of Mexican food and we love it. But Lay's classic tortilla chips, I won't, or Lay's classic chips, I won't buy those unless I know we have people coming over or we're going somewhere because they are dangerous for me to have in the house. And the, that's a waste of my money. I would rather spend more money on the fresh sushi that tastes really good than on the bag of chips for the same price. And chips are expensive if you don't buy them on a deal. I don't know if you guys realize that. Chips and pop. If you ever look at the price of either of those, they're pretty expensive compared to what I used to think they were. So keeping that in mind when you buy things, whether you're going, same thing when you go to a clothing store and you're walking around. No, we don't do a lot of in-person shopping anymore, but if you know you're going to get clothes for the girls, try to go directly to that section because you then you're less tempted by, oh, what's the clearance suit, shoe section look like? Oh, what's in housewares? I'm a clearance shopper by all means, but sometimes clearance doesn't always mean small price at checkout. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind that things like that we get carried away with. So just being intentional, being aware, staying on top of things, asking questions and doing your research and reading reviews, asking people that you trust what they think is going to help you in the long term. And right away, you may not see, oh my gosh, I have all this money. But if you start kind of slowly doing it time after time, you're going to start to see like, oh, I have a little extra buffer here. I have a little extra buffer here. It's going to come with time. 
just like with your health, if it's taken you X amount of years to get to a point where you want to make a change, it's going to take you a long time to create a mindset and habits that are going to last for a long time and are going to help you move in the right direction. So we do have time. I kind of thought this call was going to be about a half hour to 40 minutes, but I want to know, do you guys have any questions? What is your win for the week? I didn't ask that. I want to know your win is before we close up or any questions you have regarding anything. I would say I like that we talked about, again, the food at the grocery store. So I used to do the fruit and produce at the end. Like my thought was go all the way to the back of the store, start there, you know, and work your way up. That meant I was hitting fruit and produce at the end. And sometimes my cart is overflowing. So then I have to be like strategic and I probably didn't get as much as I could have because then I was worried my cart was going to overflow and stuff would fall out. So now I've been hitting that first and then I go back because like the dairy, you know, it's the back of the store um, of hitting it first and getting all the stuff that I want. So that's been a good, um, just kind of one of those eye opener things. And I'm always happy that, you know, I bought all the fruit and veggies that I'm going to eat. Um, so I like that we brought that up again. Uh, my win for the week is I, we met, um, friends of ours and the mom and I walked and we had our kids ride bikes down a trail and I took the dog with us because I figured she needs exercise too and it ended up being a 4.2 mile walk and it felt so good like I was happy we did it and everyone had a good day it was like good mental health to talk with a friend and so that was my my big win that we did it and we planned it and kept with it so that made me feel good this week. That is awesome. And I know you had talked about that trail and how you wanted to do it and kind yeah. of how uncomfortable you felt the first time because it was challenging. Yes. And you feel like it was easier this time? It was. And my friend even made a comment that we kept her pace up because Maisie was pulling us, you know, and by the end, I could tell she was like, all right, are we done yet? Because... <laughs> It was a workout for her, um, but I did. I felt better doing it that time than the first time we had done it. So I, I found that a success. That's awesome. I'm proud of you. That's great. Make sure to write that down so you remember that and what date you did it. So when you Maybe do it again to see how much easier it was. Good point. I'm writing it down now. Perfect. Jean, do you have any questions? What is your win? My win is I actually remembered and got on here, I think. And I think my other win is I'm feeling a bit more organized with my food. I still have my bumps in the road of um, at night eating, just picking the right things. My choices are not uh, what they should be, but if there's any consolation, I like thought last night, I was like, oh, I should really have another apple. And then I just succumbed to the dark side of food and went for the Doritos. But um, yeah, and I, and like, I thought about the fact the day before I went with my daughter and it was just some nice time together with her, with Beth. And we stopped at the Daily Scoop in Mason and had some ice cream, but I had the small. And so I thought that was good because normally I'm like, oh, ice cream, uh, how much can I shove in? And so I just had the small. That was good. But then I was feeling super hungry yesterday and I chose to get a, um, and it was like, it could have been dinner and it ended up being dinner kind of. I did like a Wendy's single hamburger with everything. Didn't order fries. So that was good. But then I ordered a, a small Frosty. And I shouldn't have done that because I had the other ice cream the day before. And then that made me realize that like, I can't make that a daily habit. So today my focus is to make some better choices. And I just try to go with the thing of... I'm not gaining weight. I just need to make better choices every day. And it's going to be a slow process. And I just, 
I hate that it's a slow process, but it's, there's a lot of good stuff I still can eat, like treat stuff and it's still working. It's just slow. And the slower the process, the easier it's going to be to still love and incorporate the things you love into your life. If you want it to be fast, you're going to have to cut out all that crap that you like. And then you'll get to that point where you want those foods. And then all of a sudden it's going to come all the way right back and you're going to be yeah. back at zero. So that slow process that both you guys know so well and how crappy it is that it's a slow process. It's what it's the long game. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And the fact that you went and got ice cream with Beth and you enjoyed just the great time together and then had the realization that I just can't make having ice cream two nights in a row a habit for me. That's great. Have that realization, know how to correct that. Like you have done. You're like, I'm going to be better today. I'm going to have my second apple. I'm going to drink my water, do those things. But you still were able to enjoy and have that great time and know that it wasn't going to ruin all the work you had. Yeah. That's good. Those are awesome wins. Thank you. Do you guys have any questions for me or are you guys ready to wrap up for the day? Perfect. Okay. So for all of you watching the replay, I or for you guys who are on right now, I just want to remind you that if you are loving anything that I'm teaching and sharing and you want extra help right now, drop a me in the comments and I will send you a private message and we'll just have a little chat. A um, few reminders, as always, if you want to sign up for these class um, live Zoom class reminders or for these live training reminders, click the link that I'm going to put in the comments to sign up for the email list. I know not all of you are in there. So if you want to be part of these and get those reminders, please click that link and sign up. I am teaching three live classes every single week. Some of you know this, some people don't, but if you want to try one of the classes and you are too afraid to reach out or you don't know, please just say, drop your favorite emoji and I will reach out to you and I'll get you all set up super easy, nice. It's, it's simple. I got it all set up and easy peasy for you guys. Huge thank you to all of you who have joined me live and who are watching the replay. And if you know anybody in your life that you think would benefit from this group or these trainings, please feel free to add them into the group. I would love to see more new faces and kind of get to know all of you guys. And as always, have a great rest of your day and I will see you next Thursday. By the way, there is a fun game coming up within the next couple of weeks. So be on the lookout for that on one of our calls. So that will be incentive to watch the replays and show up so you can find this cool little game I'm creating. Enjoy the rest of your day, you guys. Thank you all for being here.